Hi everyone. I've just decided to make something with whatever's in front of me on my desk. And there's a lot of stuff there. I've got a brown piece of linen. Nice loose weave on it. And I've got this. This is an interesting mesh that um, I was using in my scrapbooking kind of uh, stitched paper art last week. So I used a bit of that and I'm just cutting out a little hill shape there and I'm going to make that my sky. I want those thicker bits to look like trees if I can. So I'm just getting some blue and some white here. This is a just a wool roving. I'm just mixing them a bit, you know, like a sky colour. And I'm take, going to take little tiny little tees out, little bits, and I'm just going to try and start to poke it through the holes in that mesh through the linen and into the sponge behind. As you can see, I go up and down with my uh, special barbed needle felting needle. As long as I go in the same way I come out, it can last a very long time, this needle, and uh, goes a long way. So you can see here, what it's doing is it's actually pushing bits of that uh, roving, that wool, through to the back. So I'll speed this up a little bit. You can just see what I'm trying to do. I just looked at that and it's sort of suggested trees. So here's a little bit of sky. I'll just keep working along, adding patches. Because if it was uh, trees and sky, you know, there's leaves and there's all kinds of uh, shadows and things in the trees. And uh, it wouldn't all be one big block of blue. So now I'm getting out. This is a wool and uh, it's a wool that's dyed in all different kinds of colours so I like using it and I can easily needle felt with this. Just taking that string off, when it is spun some bits are left loose and some are really wound tight and it has a string around it. So I've taken the string off and I'm just teasing out some of the thicker areas there. And just putting in a little bit of a horizon before before those trees in the background. Don't I don't have that plan yet in my head. I'm just going with what I I feel like. But with these lovely these lovely um, woolen yarns, they're just so so useful. So I have a greeny blue kind of hill there. I didn't do anything straight across. I made it hillish. Cut that little bit off, don't need that. Now needle felting is a wonderful uh, craft because you can undo it. If you don't like it, you just pull it off again. Very simple. I'm using some nice little wispy, wispy bits of green now up the top there just to see if that works. No, I, want, I do want some sort of leafy kind of something up there. But I'll end up doing quite a bit to that sky before I'm finished. Like I say, I can quickly and easily take that wool back off again if it didn't suit. But I'm going to go with it. And I'm adding in here a more khaki, olive kind of green, just to vary those colours that are up there. But I'm not putting anything down in that band that's above the horizon. That's just the brown linen and that that white sort of mesh. But look how fine it is. I don't go for big clumps. I just like thin layers that uh, sit over top of each other. But you'll get plenty of uh, stabbing action in here to put those those fibers through to the back. We're building a picture. And there's no telling where it's going to go from here. See how that lovely wall comes in all different uh, shades? Well, I've picked up some of the bits now that are tightly woven. Like I said, it's uh, thick and thin, this, this wall. And the thinner bits I'm going to use, I teased one end out. And I'll put it up the top where the uh, where the leaves are of my trees, and I'll use that 
that last little stem on it and I'll needle felt that down and that will be like a trunk. We'll have some white trunks, we'll have some different greeny brown trunks and uh, and hopefully in the end we'll look like we've got some kind of forest happening. That's why I like these variegated uh, yarns because they have so many different colours that you can use. So we've got some lighter ones, we've got some darker ones, I'll space them out. And now I'm just adding a little bit more to the tops. I'm just, I'm not going to be totally satisfied for a while yet, but I'll come back to it. Uh, in the meantime, let's get some colours down further. Oh, that's a mauvey colour. It's a good shadow colour, this kind of lavender or mauve. And this, I use this a lot. This is a really strange yarn that just, it's uh, unraveled, but I like it. It's a, it's a nice shiny straw-like kind of green colour and it's very useful. But things, things like that won't really, um, sometimes they won't push through to the back, so therefore they're not felting in. So you just use a very fine bit of wool roving over top and uh, allow bits of it to show and use the, the rest of the wool to trap it both sides and, um, and it'll stay there and you'll still see little bits of it. So I like to experiment with what will work and find different things that I can use all the time. I do like this, I do like this craft for shading and uh, allowing you to put texture in. Now look at this interesting yarn, it's more like a ribbon, but it, I, sometimes I try and pull them apart but it won't do anything, but I'm going to try and use it anyway. Let's just, you know, try it and see. So I'll just try and put a little li uh, line in here and uh, don't quite know how or what it is yet, but you know, we'll see. I'm also going to put in some uh, furry kind of yarn, which suggests pinky kind of grasses. That matches in with that orangey brown colour we've got there. But like I say, they're not really going to uh, be pushed through to the back of our linen with the needle. So we use a fine bit of some other roving over top again and we just coax it. Oh that was a little bit too dark so I'm going to add something else in. Don't ever worry you can always add something to the top or take something off. It's nothing to get concerned about. So this bit here that I'm using of this lovely wool is a, a, a more of a clay orange beigey colour and I'm going to put some of that in there. I, I don't know yet what it's suggesting. I have hopes that it will turn out in the end. My next colour I'm going to try for my little scrap box is a really dark brown. Not sure where. I'll, I'm going to pop some at the bottom of the tree's leaves because that is is how trees appear in the in the distance that the darker colors are at the bottom of where the leaves are because the leaves are shading them from the light the leaves higher up uh, oh, and i'm going to try this too see I'll see how i grab that piece there and i just tease it into a little strip and i'm trying that too tacking that down okay with some dark brown um, trunks of trees. I'm bringing in a little bit of this this um, bluey green colour down here just so that we've got a touch of it because we've got it up in the sky. Now let's try a little bit more of that 
rusty orange creamy creamy wool here see how I tease it out and I get variations of that color and tease it out a little bit more so it stretches a bit further looks quite nice I think I, I can I can think of something that it's going to be maybe it's oh yeah, well it could be fields of flowers that have got orange colors it could be clay it could be a few different things we'll just work on it and see I'd quite like leaving things up to our imagination as to what it ends up being I just like playing with the color Now I'm popping some pale green over the top. See how you can tint different colours up. I'm bringing a touch of green down into the orange. I can use it as well on that darker teal kind of colour to uh, lighten that a bit. You're yeah, adding down uh, layers of depth of colour. Here's a little bit more colour going into the trees. I've gotten a few different greens. I'm just lightening some of it up. We've got very dark colours there, but it'd be nice to have light over top of it to sort of um, make it look more realistic, I suppose. I've still got a way to go. I'm not overly happy with any bits of it yet, but it doesn't worry me. Let's peel it off this linen. Can you see how well it's worked? All of those fibres have pushed through. That means it's really melding well with that background fabric. Something with a loose kind of weave that will let you poke uh, the needle through and take bits of that fibre with it. You could experiment with all kinds of things. I'm just uh, adding a bit more. I don't need to cover all of my linen. Parts of it can show. The brown I'm using now will help blend it back into the linen colour. Blocking it off with your hands like that helps you visualise it as a, a whole picture. I'm just adding in a little bit of... Well, it's a sort of a silk wool blend and it has some nice light sage greeny kind of aqua colors in it but I just thought it would uh, we'll see what it does hmm. and now a darker color just to blend that vivid blue in a little bit still don't know what that's going to be but I quite like the blue underneath. It was just a nice colour. So it's very interesting. Have a look here at how we've got little bits of that shiny yarn in there. Just little bits of it showed up. But I'm thinking now I'm going to stop. I'm still not happy with, with, well, quite a lot of it really. But I'm just going to add a few stitches for a start and see... Just see what I think. See how I have to really pull it off that sponge because it's really adhered to it. But I'm going to start here and I'm just going to do an easy running stitch going across from one side to the other. When you run out of thread, take it through to the back, do a couple of stitches on top of each other and uh, snip off the ends and that will hold it. Now I'm going to do another line. Remember when you're doing it that you can, um, you know, trap things down. You could do some decorative stitches. At the moment, I've got all six strands of this lovely goldy coloured um, floss. The first time it was just a single strand. You couldn't really see it, but it's nice to mix, thing, mix things up like that a little bit. But I've decided I'm just doing a little curvy line and I'm hoping it will suggest contours in the ground in the landscape 
but here as I get to the low point I thought okay why not do a couple of uh, French knots add a bit of texture again so a needle comes up three times around the needle and back down again very close to where you came up I do have videos on on how to do this or you can find lots of things online about it so a French knot I really like them they add so much so a little cluster as I go and then I'll just continue doing uh, the running stitch over to the other side and then back again maybe as long as uh, that thread lasts but as I go if I think something needs holding down a little bit better or you know I, I just let the uh, the picture guide me as to where I'm stitching let's take a closer look at what we've done so far look at that lovely texture that lovely furry yarn just beautiful how it all comes together like that so it's another day sometimes it's good to just leave it and come back to it and just see how you view it the next time like is it what you want do you want to try something else well I'm not very happy yet with it reasonably happy so I've grabbed out these yarns each one of them has fluffy edges to it so I think that they will felt through so I've pulled out a selection to try let's see what this adds to the design just going to place them across in a horizontal kind of curvy line sometimes I'll bunch it up a bit and uh, needle felt them in and just see you can direct things a little bit with the point of your needle bunch it up or pull it down or up as long as when you're doing the stabbing motion you go down and out uh, in the same direction don't twist it don't put it in and then uh, try and take it out from a different direction because it will snap so with all of these different uh, novelty yarns fancy fancy wools and threads it's well worth the experiment to see what what it will do if it doesn't uh, go through well enough then you can put a, a thin uh, layer of, of wool roving over the top or you can couch them down but I just think they add so much this lovely bobbly yarn I'm going to cut into very small bits instead of doing a whole line across I'm going to use them in the trees just to add in a little bit of lightness I really don't know where I'm going with these trees so might do a little bit more work on those we'll get there though I'm just adding the very tiniest little bit of wool over the top of some areas just to green it up a bit it's like shading how you can tint something with just a very small amount of wool very fine layers work very well let's try a little bit of these silk fibers they're from a cocoon but they look really good they've got a a nice color that's going to echo what's in the foreground I think I'll add a bit of embroidery now and see where that takes us so I'm just using a, a tapestry wool and it's like an eight ply ordinary wool and I'm doing some French knots French knots or seed stitch is about all I'll do and I'm just following along adding just those little bits of texture and holding things down and 
and just adding that little bit of green that I'm hoping will finish these trees off nicely. When you're finished with any stitching, just take it through to the back, do a couple of stitches on top of each other and snip it. Now I've gone a little further. I've done this darker line on the horizon there, just to separate it from our sky. And down there as well, I've done some stitching. Let's have a closer look. Where the um, French knots are, yeah, I think it really, uh, it really helps. Right now I'm looking at that dark green expanse that I have there on that hill. I've added in a little bit of a lighter green. I think I'm getting there. Let's have a look in a frame. Having a closer no look now will show you all those lovely different fibres, mostly yarns that I've used. Don't they look interesting? You can see some French knots have been added in here and there. And one more thing, I just used a bit of brown um, floss or stranded cotton and I added in some trunks and branches on our trees there and I'm I'm quite satisfied I think we've got something quite interesting so I think it's uh, it's fun it's something that you can just keep adding to and it's a great experimental textile artwork so have a go at this craft of needle felting and see what you come up with. So if you've liked this video, don't forget to press like, subscribe if you would like, and uh, I'll see you for something different next time. Thanks again for watching.